Hi, I'm Ryan. I'm a front-end engineer here at Zoomasys. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be going over how to display a database record via a simple API connection. Um, we're actually going to use the API connection that we set up in a previous tutorial called setting up Git endpoint. Actually, let's take a look at that on the GitHub uh, repository for this in Google Chrome. So if you just go to github.com forward slash pick multi-value, you go to full stack with pick tutorial, you'll see a backend directory and that has setting up Git endpoint right here. So if you need to uh, remember that or look back, that's how you get there. If go back to the tutorial, we'll be working on the front end um, and it'll be display record with simple API connection. This has all the links in it and stuff, so you might want to keep it handy and all this script written out, so if you need to see anything. Um, but for this tutorial, you really just need to know minimal HTML, JavaScript, and a little bit of Vue. And be sure that you have the index.html file from the previous tutorial, because that's what we're going to be working off of. So let's open that up in Visual Studio Code. All right, the first thing we're going to want to do is add the Axios NPM package or JavaScript library. So we'll go over to Chrome and we'll just type in Axios JavaScript and it'll come up right here. If we scroll down here, you'll see there's a CDN we can include uh, or a link that we can include it via CDN. So if we go back over to our index, just add it to the header like so. And you can really use a few different web methods to get API calls. You can actually use JavaScript's fetch, which is really good. But um, we're going to use Axios just because it's kind of common practice in the view world to use that for API calls. Um, and it has a lot of handy features that fetch actually doesn't have. So that's all we have to do to install Axios. Pretty sweet, right? Okay, so now we're gonna test the endpoint that we set up in the previous tutorial. And to do that, we're just gonna open Postman, which is a free program to test API endpoints. Um, and if you go back over to our GitHub, you'll see that we set up a URL here called localhost 2002 API demo. And that number on the end of the URL is just our database record identifier. So there's about 100 records in that database. So if we just switch that anywhere from 001 to 100, we'll get different records that we can display. So we'll take that URL and we will put it in Postman just by creating a new request. We'll call it um, demo test request and add it to the Zoomasys collection. So we'll hit enter here and press send. And you can see that's all up and running for Pate Murphy. I'm not sure, that name sounds a little suspicious. Let's look at another one. Uh, a Pate again. What are the chances of this? All right, let's try another one. Harry, there we go. Okay, so API is up and running. Next, we are going to go back over to our index.html file. And we're going to add a few new properties. Um, the first is going to be record, which is where we'll store the record that we get back. Uh, we'll also add one called loading. It'll just be a Boolean value that tells us if we're loading from the API, which we won't really have any problems with right now because it's local. But if it was going across the web to get data, we really need this. Um, the next one is error. So let us know if we have any errors. It'll be Boolean as well. The other thing we're gonna do right now is we're gonna change data into function and we're gonna have that function return our data object which may seem a little weird if you aren't super familiar with you. But the idea behind this is it'll kind of future proof our app because um, if we return the object like this through an anonymous function, I'm sorry, not anonymous, a uh, function of data, uh, we won't run into like states being the same name or syntax as other states or 
data and other components that basically just helps keep everything separated. So we're going to take care of that. And then we're actually going to utilize a, oh, I should change this to record just so we can display something. We're actually going to utilize a view function called mounted and mounted is called during the view instance lifecycle after the component has been mounted. I know, right? The words, it's just right when the component gets mounted, basically this function gets called. So it helps people add stuff there. Um, so I that just like we added the other properties, it'll be a function. And within that function is actually where we're going to make our Axios call to request our API data. So uh, we will use this Axios, um, it's actually a request method alias called git and it's a really simple so we'll just do axios dot git really it takes a parameter and that parameter is the url that we're using for our api which i just happen to have still in my copy and paste on my clipboard um so that's it for getting the api um and we can just change whatever record we want let's go back to harry was he 21 i don't know but um, to work with this, um, we're going to use a couple of, or actually three um, different methods that Axios offers us. And it's actually really cool. Uh, it's a thing called uh, method chaining in JavaScript. So we can just chain methods to this Axios. It's kind of a function and also an object because those are kind of the same thing in JavaScript. But the chain method we'll be using are then and catch. Oops, I thought that was going to auto populate. And the last one is finally. Finally, if I can spell it right. Um, and it's kind of standard syntax to just like put these on new lines in method chaining, just makes it easy to read. But I think all these are fairly obvious what they do. Um, so then it's just, we'll basically get the, um, after we get the API data, then what do we do? And then catch is like, oh, is there an error? Then we'll catch it. And finally is like, what happens when this is done? Um, all these methods, they all take a callback function, an anonymous callback function. Um, so we will write those out and um, they get past an argument and these two for what we need, right? Like call this function and pass a response once we get something and then, oh, call this function and if there's an error, pass it that. And then finally, doesn't actually have Oops, any arguments that get passed. All right, so now we need to make these methods do something actually useful. So we are going to make the data property this dot record, and this is how you access it. It's a global object. Um, well, depending on how it's scoped. Uh, this dot record, we're going to make it equal to the response. And then in the catch error, we're definitely going to cancel a lot of this error. And then we're also going to tell the property error to be true because we got an error. And then finally, we're just going to tell uh, the loading property that it's loaded. So it's not loading anymore. So we'll set that equal to false. All right, and now, actually, you know what? Let's console log this uh, response real quick so you can see it. Response, nope, I gotta put in this. Okay, so we'll open up the index uh, with Google Chrome. Oh, and you see all this data, and it looks like a bunch of I don't know, gobbledygook, but you can see that they have all sorts of 
uh, API request data in here. Um, it's hard to tell right here, but you can see, let's see here, hardware, transform response, cookie name, header name, method git, here's all the headers, it's got all sorts of stuff. So in our case, we really just kind of want this data record. Um, so what we're going to do in our Visual Studio Code is we're going to say data dot data and then it's an array zero so let's console log this record now and see what it is hopefully we got it right okay looks like we got it right i guess i could have actually showed you guys that in the console uh object but, all right, now it's actually time to display this data in some sort of meaningful way. So let's go back to our code. Uh, we'll delete this console. And we are actually gonna utilize something view calls directives. And they're actually really handy and they're just, think of them as like HTML tag attributes. So it's like, if we put this attribute on some piece of HTML, it's gonna tell view to do this. So for this, we're just going to make a div and we are going to encase everything in it. And we're going to add a DVP directive called view if. And what we're going to do with this directive is we're going to say, if there's an error, show everything in this div. Hey, there's been an error. Um, and we'll utilize the next one called the else in a similar way. So it's just v dash else. And we don't need to give it anything unless we want to give it something strict and do it. Um, but in that case, we're going to want to see Oop, I got an extra closing in here. We're going to want to see the record. So if there's been no errors, we're going to want to see the record. Um, and if we do want to see the record, we also need to take care of that whole loading thing. So we're going to say, create another div. We're going to say, v dash if loading. So it's just reading this Boolean value right here. And if it's set to true, we're gonna say, show a message, like loading dot dot dot. And then if it's not set to true, we're gonna make another div, let's say, be else, oops. And within there is where we're gonna show our record. All right, let's see if it's still showing our record. We'll go back over to the browser. Yep, looks like it's showing it. So, just to make it a little more personalized, how about we say hi, record dot, first name, and then why don't we get real formal about this and put their last name in there too. Last name. Okay, we refresh, it says, hi, Harry Gates. And so that's it. That's all you have to do to do a simple API call using Axios and Vue. Um, go ahead and watch any of the other videos in the series and they will explain in more detail of how to interact with the API. Thanks.